Okay. And all the recording will be posted uh, on the Moodle page. Uh, that doesn't mean you should not attend, right? Uh, you should attend and participate. Um, we will have some, um, some classes that will be uh, asynchronous. That is, you'll have to watch some uh, recordings and, uh, and that's it. Uh, and some classes will be synchronous where we're going to review those recordings that you've watched or, or if we assign some other readings or this. Uh, any material. Um, so you'll have a little bit of both in this course. Okay. And in addition, you'll have also the, um, the, uh, the lab activities. Um, yeah. Okay. So, well, actually, before I start, I'd just like to, uh, well, I'm just looking at all everyone and uh, anyone would like to say anything before we we start um would like to share uh, anything because now i'm i will not see you as as i start my um presentation okay in any case you interrupt uh the group at any time turn on the mic and and speak for any question or comment okay Okay, so welcome to General Biology 2. So this is a course that I believe most of you chose. Um, and I suppose, um, well, I hope you're interested in biology. Uh, in any case, we'll try to make that uh, a good course, even given the special circumstances this semester. Um, All right. Oh, well, there, there was uh, Mark and I and Mackenzie. I don't know where Mackenzie is. There was a picture of Mackenzie, but it just disappeared. So, uh, but I, you might see Mackenzie at some point. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll invite her to, uh, to join the group someday so, so you see her. Um, and yes, actually, I would like to know, and, and I'm going to go back to the big group now. Um, I'd like to get a little bit of feedback from you. That is, that is uh, what do you like most about biology or why you're interested in biology? What topics or, or what general ideas you, you like about biology? Uh, again, hoping that you like biology uh, and why you're interested in this course. So I, I, it would be really useful for us to, uh, to know why you chose this course. Uh, so actually, I'm going to go back to the big group and I'm going to try to encourage participation. I'm not going to you know, pinpoint the individual students, but I would like many students to participate, right? So it's great. So, some of you are, um, I guess, uh, find it easier to speak in, uh, in larger groups, but, um, but it's really great if, if many people uh, uh, do contribute. So my first question, so um, what do you like most or what do you like about biology? And um, well, let's wait if someone wants to say something. You can turn well, on your, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I chose biology because I really like, like human biology in particular. I find it really interesting how our bodies work and how our cell and what they do to, how kind of like how we are, what we are. Mm -hmm. and how we can do our bodies can do what they can do and whatnot so okay thank you so much abigail right yeah okay thank you abigail yeah well human biology certainly it, it, we can all relate to that uh, so that's quite interesting and we will cover some human biology in this course so hopefully that that uh, will be good that point i'll follow that yeah um I'm much less interested in human biology and more about like ecology or um, the environment and that sort of thing. I'm in this course because I've enrolled, I've applied to environmental biology at university. Okay, so you need that course to uh, as a prerequisite. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, the focus of this course is not so much ecology. However, we always have to keep that in mind, right? Because Obviously, we're part, even if we study human biology, we're part of larger systems uh, that influence how we function as well. Um, okay, thank you, Isaac. Anyone else? Silence? Um, oh, yeah. I guess I like... Um... 
biology sort of more of the I guess kind of both human biology as well as environmental biology and I've also applied to environmental biology um, sort of more kind of uh, sort of study of uh, animals rather um, okay. and so I just find their behaviors interesting and also sort of with the, going along with the human biology just seeing you know knowing how the body works and like what happens to it because of certain things okay yeah have you have you uh i mean this is not very fun but have you been uh, looking at what is happening in terms of for example the virus the current virus and how it affects the human body for example or yeah yeah i have been yeah i mean i yeah. kind of find it interesting but yeah. yeah yeah it's certainly very interesting and there's yeah. yeah a lot to learn there as well thank you grace Someone um, wants, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just kind of tired of taking chemistry. Okay. <laughs> didn't want to take a fourth chemistry class. Okay. And I, I did enjoy um, the first biology class we took. So that's okay. why. <laughs> All right. Okay, good. Um, I find the like different functions of cells really interesting. And like just all the different types of cells in the body and how they interact with each other and how they all play their own role and like you know i just find them really fascinating and what they can do is really really interesting <laughs> okay okay very good and do you have any plans in the future to study bi more biology yeah i, I want to go into molecular biology or like immunology or microbiology or something like that yeah oh, okay okay so you're more interested at the molecular or cellular level okay. Yeah. yeah okay Thank you. Anyone else? Any one last, one last brave person, perhaps? Uh, I took this class because I find biology to be it was the most consistently interesting science I took uh, first semester. So I kind of decided I'd take it again because it seems pretty cool. I want to go into uh, biology, hopefully in university too. And either veterinarian, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure where with biology next because all of it's just kind of cool. Yeah. Okay, yeah, there's, there's quite a, well, as we have heard already, there are several different fields into which you can go. And, you know, in biology, everything is connected also. So even if you study one field, you'll, uh, you'll be able to make links with other topics as well. Okay. Um, okay, is there anyone else who would like just to provide any comment? Okay, we'll continue. You'll get, you'll get a chance to, uh, to um, share some of your, um, your thoughts as well. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we can make, I mean, participation is very important. It's, it's not just, um, I mean, it's not that I want to force students to participate. It's just that if you participate and if you're, um, I guess, um, engaged, um, it's going to be much, much better for you in terms of the learning process. Uh, and especially that now that we're online, um, you know, it will probably also make you feel good, right? To talk, to be able to talk and, and exchange because it's a little difficult right now uh, for many of us uh, to be kind of confined. Um, so I really encourage everyone to, to share their thoughts, participate. And, you know, there's never, there's never an incorrect answer or a stupid answer to any question. Uh, so never hesitate. Okay, uh, maybe I can tell you just a little bit about uh, my interest. Uh, well, obviously by now I'm interested in, in many fields in biology because I, well, I had to learn them to teach them. Um, but my first interest was evolution. Uh, and I did study um, something that we call molecular evolution um, at uh, university. So there I was looking at the... Uh, changes in the genetic material of, of uh, small organisms like bacteria. Um, and uh, I've always liked evolution because I'm, I'm interested in change, right? Nothing 
ever stays the same in biology. Okay, so uh, now on to the course outline. So just a couple of comments regarding the course outline. Oh, and actually I forgot. I have a, a little pad that I use to write on. It's really, it's really good. Um, but then I just forgot to set it up. So here it is. Okay. I would like to, I'm going to um, write some stuff on the slides uh, or just add a few comments here and there. And those slides I will post afterwards. So you will be able to see the annotated slides. Uh, now, as you saw in a message that uh, we sent you, uh, it might be a little difficult for us, for us to um, to give you uh, printed handouts. Um, so we're trying to send the the, um, the documents at least you know one day ahead of time or uh, as as soon as we have them ready. Um, one thing is that all three of us, so Mark, Mackenzie, and I, we're all new to this course. So it's the first time we teach the course. So we don't have material prepared from previous years. Plus, it's online. So it takes us a little while to, to get our stuff ready. Uh, so we don't have a package for you at the moment. Now, hopefully, if you get your slides before, some of you will be able to print if you want. If you don't, you don't have to print the slides because, again, all the annotated slides uh, from my group will be posted online. So you could review those as well. Okay, does that make sense? No? Okay. All right, so, well, this course, uh, I think this is just the straightforward information that you would see in any course. So five hours per week, that's because we have three hours of theory and two hours of lab. And we're going to mix uh, the two. Uh, there will be a little bit more, uh, uh together this time because of the situation so we will do we will kind of mix slam and theory uh, a bit more but um but that that could be good too uh here we have the main competencies that we are trying to achieve so i would just like to read that one so it says to analyze the structure and function or functioning of multi-cell so multicellular organisms in terms of homeostasis and from an evolutionary perspective. So today, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to think about those three themes, this structure and function, homeostasis and evolutionary uh, perspective. But these are themes that you can imagine they're going to be present all through the material that we will cover. Okay. Uh, we have our three teachers here with uh, the office hours. Mark is in the TLC, the, the Learning Center. Uh, this year it's uh, online, um, so via Zoom and our office hours. So we're very, we're very happy to um, to meet you during our office hours. But uh, we would like you to to contact us before. Just you know, tell us can I meet you tomorrow? Let's say uh, in my case, let's say can I can I meet you Thursday 11 so that uh, we set up an appointment. I I send you the the Zoom link and and we're sure that we can meet there. Or otherwise, I can always answer your meal, uh, your message, your emails, uh, respond by email as well at any at any time. Uh, well, whenever I'm available. Okay. Uh, course learning outcomes. I'm not going to read those, but basically these are uh, what we're trying to achieve in this course. Okay. So, so you're learning my information. Yes, you're learning. Um, um, contents, but more importantly, you're learning um, competencies or skills. And I would say what you're trying to do in this course is to learn to think like a biologist. Okay, so so throughout all the examples we're giving, all the course materials, and you processing that information, uh, the objective is to think like a biologist, um, think like a scientist for sure, and and as a bio biologist more specifically. Okay. Uh, the course platform, so today we're on Zoom. So we are going to meet on Zoom all semester. Uh, Omnivox for communication by Mio. You can always send me also messages via the, uh, the Outlook um, uh, email address, but uh, I know that students typically use Mio. Uh, Moodle. 
so here we're going to have all the course documents will be posted online and our online evaluations will be there. So Mark was talking about Moodle quizzes for the lab. So that's where it's going to take place. Uh, at the moment, we're um, most likely going to have our exams, or uh, sorry, our tests, and possibly the final exam as well online. Um, there's always a concern from, okay, I'll just go back here to, to the big group. So there's always a concern um, because we're online, uh, that there would be students who would, uh, you know, behave in a, uh, I guess, um, how can I say that? Well, would cheat, okay, plagiarize or cheat, or uh, you know, communicate with other students during an evaluation to, you know, try to get answers and so on. Um, so obviously it's a concern for all teachers now that we're online, um, but there's also the other concern, which is health right, and, and public health and safety. Uh, and so we're making that compromise now to have our evaluations online. Um, and in any case, you know, that's also directives from the college or the government, but, um, but we're trusting that the students are going, to, that the, the students' um, evaluations will be completed honestly, okay? And I just want to tell you that this is just the, the best approach uh, to have, okay? It's not just to follow the rules, but if you're going to, to, to um, how can I say that? Well, basically the point of an evaluation is to assess where you are, right? And what it is that you need to focus on, uh, what you don't do well and what you need to, uh, uh, to review further and so on. Uh, so if you're not the person doing the evaluation or if you're taking answers from someone else or from uh, online, uh, then basically uh, you're missing the whole point of the evaluation. Okay, so, um, so we're trusting that you're adults, uh, honest, and that you understand that this is just the best approach, uh, you know, for in general for the learning process. So, so we're trusting students there. Um, but yeah, so the evaluations will mostly be uh, online this semester, okay? Anyone wants to comment on that? And that, that also applies to all your courses, right? So I'm telling you, you know, it's, it just doesn't make sense to, to cheat, okay? So it's just a bad strategy and it's also dishonest and it ruins the whole process. Okay. Um, now, as teachers, oh, well, sorry, I should, uh, I should just indicate a little bit further here. So we're going to have labs and assignments, regular uh, evaluations, probably weekly or every second week. And uh, they will be, you know, around three to 5% each. Um, we are going to have three tests and the final exam at the end. Okay, so it's relatively straightforward. Our tests are spaced, uh, kind of evenly throughout the semester. Now, as teachers, we're going to try to communicate with you as clearly as possible, try to provide you reminders uh, of uh, course activities and due dates on Mio. Uh, we're going to make ourselves available um, and try to mark uh, your evaluations rapidly. Um, in the course outline, there's a little line here that says, as a student in this class, I will. So this is something for you to think about. How will you uh, attempt to ensure success in this course? So what will be the steps that you will take? Okay, so this is something for you to think about. It's a kind of a commitment that you're making uh, in this course. Okay, so we're committing some, uh, some aspects. And you also commit uh, also uh, on your own, okay? So this is something I guess you you know you will want to think about and and fill in. Well, there's no paper uh, for you to fill in, but just think about it, right? What will you do? And I'll ask again and that question in a couple of minutes. Um, 
late assignments, Ms. Tess. Well, here, um, you're probably not going to miss a lab uh, since it's all online, um, but if you do need an accommodation for whatever reason, so uh, usually the procedure is you contact um, academic services for uh, to request an accommodation, okay? But um, yeah, in particular for the tests, for instance. Okay, so as we said, it's very important that you participate. It's important for your learning process. And um, here I'd like, and there's a little bit of space I have here. I'd like to get feedback from you to know what kind of uh, study tips would you have? What kind of things work well for you or have worked well in the past um, in terms of studying? So I'm wondering if someone would like to share any of their study tips. Um, I think it's good to like set aside like an hour of bio and then take a break and then switch it up so you're not doing the same thing over and over again. Okay, okay. So, so you set aside some time for each, uh, each course, I guess. Study time for each course. And you say you study an hour, so you won't study four hours of bio at once, right? That I guess that's what you meant, right? Yeah, I'd rather not. Okay, so set aside study time and also study in smaller bits or chunks, right? So you don't want you know, say say 30 minutes to an hour is good. But then after that, uh, you probably will get distracted. So it's just better that you do something else. Okay, what else? Someone wants to share any other tip? Um, I find if I have a lot to do, like if it's before really the big test, I need to review a whole bunch. Um, I'll do 25 minutes of sort of super focused studying. And then after that, I'll have just five minutes where I, you know, don't look at my notes and they'll just sort of do something else and then I'll come back to it. Okay. Um, Cause that kind of helps, you know, like sort of keeping a focus and I find it helps me remember things a lot better too. Okay, very good. So you take some breaks in between. Yeah, very good. Now, would you want to study everything just before the test? Is that what you would do? <laughs> I mean, for review. Okay. But, uh, yeah, otherwise, I mean, one thing that also helps is writing uh, your notes in your own, sort of like in your own words. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Do you ever try to teach to others? Um, sometimes I'll just kind of sort of uh, kind of teach it to myself or like I'll just sort of sit down with, um, and just kind of like briefly explain something to my parents if I'm not getting it. Just okay. have someone ask me questions about it and have me explain it. Okay, okay. And do you find that helps? Yeah, because it's recalling information. Okay, very good. So teaching others would be really great. Anything else? Um, I really like um, watching videos or like animations to kind of like visualize what you're learning. Okay, very good. And so where do you find those videos? How do you um, find them? Just on YouTube. Like I just search up the topic and then okay. remove your videos, yeah. Okay, very good. Anyone else wants to share something? Any other tip? No? I have a question, Boris. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, are there usually like um like practice worksheets for us to do before an evaluation or like practice questions? Uh, well, this uh, I'm going to discuss with my colleagues. Uh, we haven't really set that uh, specifically. Uh, I know that it's very useful for students, so it will depend on the. So if we can, we're going to do that for sure. We're going to provide you with that. Um, if uh, if we don't have time to prepare this, then 
we would encourage still students to to find some resources where they could practice uh there will be a yeah well i'll i'll try to think about how we could do that uh, as much as possible okay i don't want to promise uh yet uh and not deliver but uh that's we're going to attempt to do that for sure cool thanks yeah Oh, and I saw here in the chat also make a mind map. Very good. Okay. Oh. Okay, so give questions at the start of class. Okay, so Miss Pickles, that's Laura. Yeah, so Laura was giving you questions at the beginning of class for you to think about. So that's good. Okay, very good. Yeah, so practicing would be, you know, practice questions would be really good. Uh, if we have those, then we'll provide. If not, you can always make your own as well. But uh, yeah, uh, I have a little video to show you with a few uh, examples of uh, tips. Oh, I got another message here in the chat. Oh, flashcards. Very good. I'll write that here too, flashcards. So anything that's active, right? There's a difference between active and passive learning. If you just reread your notes and do not process it actively, it's not going to be so efficient. So always try to be active in your learning. Okay, it's just a three minute video. Let me try to show you this. Um, and I think it's going to be similar. In some cases will be similar to what you've just said already. Okay, so I'll try to play it. Hopefully it shows on your screen and sound is good too. Try. And it's no surprise that many of us are determined to study smarter instead of longer. Can everyone hear? Okay, good. But which study tips and tricks actually work scientifically and can help you get those perfect grades? First up, research shows that study sessions are most effective in small, short chunks. Instead of cramming in a 10-hour study session, it's much more effective to spread it out into 20, 30-minute sessions over a few weeks. This is because your brain is better at encoding information into the synapses in short, repeated sessions as opposed to one large one. And this is why even learning different skills, whether it's swimming, tennis, or a singing lesson, often follows this same format. And while cramming and pulling all-nighters may be a rich it turns out that this is linked to the lowest grades. After prolonged nocturnal study sessions, reasoning and memory may be negatively affected for up to four whole days. Instead, setting up specific times in a day or during the week just to study primes your brain by creating a routine, and over time, studying actually becomes easier as your brain is trained to learn in those moments. And while many of us spend hours passively rereading our notes or highlighting a textbook, studies have shown this to be ineffective. It doesn't improve your understanding of topics, nor does it link key concepts together. It can even be detrimental as it draws your attention to less important information. Flashcards, on the other hand, are proven to be excellent memory reinforcement tools, whether during your scheduled study times or during off times like a bus ride home. It also helps to have a specific goal for each study session. Instead of aimlessly studying, pick one aspect you'll focus on, whether it's balancing chemical equations or learning how to conjugate French verbs. If you can't explain it simply, then you don't understand it well enough. In studies where individuals were asked to learn a passage, and then half were told that they would be tested on the material while the other half were told they would have to teach it to other students, participants expecting to teach it did much better at understanding the main points. When you're expecting to teach, your brain organizes the information in a more logical, coherent structure. Of course, practice, practice, practice. Not only do practice tests put your brain in the environment, but even if you make mistakes, they help identify gaps in your knowledge. Practice tests have also been shown to increase confidence, thereby leading to better performance. So where should you be studying? Research shows that having a designated sacred spot for study that's well equipped with every tool you might need is best. Just like setting times, this primes your brain for studying. Have an awesome study playlist? Not so fast. While some studies have shown that certain types of classical music can help improve concentration, a recent study has shown that learning with rhythmic background noise can be detrimental to focus and those not using music fared much better. And if you haven't already, put away your phone. 
this is a no-brainer, but your texts and social media notifications severely decrease concentration. Of course, exams can be extremely stressful, so if you want some tips on how to deal with exam anxiety, check out our ASAP Thought video which breaks down some tips for that. Link in the description. And a big thank you to T Okay, so that went fast, but um, did you catch any of those tips? Uh, some of them we had already mentioned, right? They're quite good. So uh, the link I think we'll post on Moodle so you can watch again, but um, obviously several of those uh, you might be doing already. Uh, and if not, then you can start the semester to do it. Okay, any comments? No? All right, well, it, it kind of, uh, many of the points that were made are quite similar to what we had just said, right? So that's good. So that's also part of the commitment you make in this course, you know, you're go going to study regularly and so on. Uh, in particular, I would recommend that you review the material regularly, okay? And being as active as possible, not just rereading your notes, but try to reorganize them, make a concept map and so on. Because if you come to class and then uh, just forget about it until say the next week or next class, um, where, we where we cover some new material, uh, there's a good chance you're going to learn the previous, uh, so we forget the previous material quite fast. So this is the curve of forgetting, as you can see, we forget quite rapidly if you don't review. If you do review, you will fare much better because um, you're, you, know, you don't have to review 10 hours or so, well, let's say one hour. If you had a one hour class, you don't have to re review one full hour. Can review 15 minutes, um, but you review regularly, okay, to keep the information in your mind as fresh as possible. And, you know, this is, you know, it's scientific in the sense that uh, there's some processes taking place in the brain uh, where you're reinforcing your connections every time you review the material, so you make it easier uh, to access that material uh, over time. So these are for a couple of study tips. And actually I forgot, maybe the, some of the most important study tips is also exercise. Okay, and very important in this uh, current situation as well, uh, we're stuck home. So try to go out every day before 8 p.m., right? Um, and you know, take a walk or do some activity, some sports if you can. Uh, it's going to be really important uh, for your mental health uh, in general and also for the learning process in this and other courses. Okay, so exercise, sleep well, eat well. These are basics, right, to keep your body in a good shape. Okay. So, yeah, so I'll, I'll share this afterwards uh, with everyone. Any comments at this point? No? So hopefully, like I'm talking a lot, but uh, hopefully you're still able to focus. Uh, I know that after a little while, uh, it's, it's more difficult, especially if you're looking at a screen. Um, so I think we're going to just uh, get started a little bit on, um, on the teams in biology, then take a break and then come back. Um, so first here, I'm showing some cubes, um, same, same number of cubes. What about the surface area? So that's a, uh, a math problem. So anyone wants to comment on the surface area of those two uh, figures? And what is the surface area first? And also, is there a difference between the two? Is that something you saw in your other classes? I'm curious, maybe in chemistry or physics, do you see any, do you discuss surface area? There is a difference between the two of them. 
Okay. One's four times six and one's four times seven. Okay. So you say four times six. Where do you get that four times six and four times well, seven? Can you explain? One, one side of the cube is four units and there's six sides on the cube. Okay. And the other one, it's two sides of eight, two sides of four and two sides of two. Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. So you can, you can add it up, right? Or you can just multiply as well. So you counted, basically you have this space, this, so it's four times six. Okay, so now I, I see what you mean here with four times six, right? Six faces. And this one you said it's how many? Eight. You have eight on both sides, two here and four. Okay, so that's, if we know how to calculate, that's how many? Oh, you said four times seven, right? 28, yeah, it's good. Exactly. So one has a larger surface area, and this is 24, and the other one is 28. Why do we care about that in biology? So let me show you this image. So we have different species of rabbits and different species of foxes. Uh, do you notice any difference between those, like in terms of their structure? And try to relate to the slide that we just looked at before. Some have a higher surface area. Okay. There's more, uh, yeah. Okay, more surface area, right? In the ears. So here there's more surface area compared to this one. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, same thing with the fox. Okay. Now, why would different species of uh, rabbits have ears with different surface areas? Maybe it's like the different climates they live in. They have to like hear predators through like different climates. You know, if there's not very many trees, it'll be easier to hear them, but vice versa. Okay, very interesting. Okay, so you're suggesting there are differences in the environment in which they live. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I mean, uh, well, go ahead, Swear. No, you go ahead. Um, so, I mean, I know for rabbits, they use their ears to cool themselves. So, I guess the one with the bigger ears would probably live in a, a hotter climate. Mm -hmm. um, so, they need sort of a bigger surface area to be able to cool themselves down sort of better. Okay. Okay. Is that an idea that others uh, agree with? Yeah, that yeah, that sounds good. About right. yeah, <laughs> he's right. Yeah, he's right. Good, good, good. Exactly. So, I mean, that could be one possible reason we would have to investigate further. But certainly, uh, there's many blood vessels here in those ears, uh, and that allows to radiate excess heat uh, in some climates. Uh, and now, you would probably imagine uh, the foxes with long ears. Well, depending, right? Are the foxes using the ears for thermal regulation or maybe for something else? Maybe. Uh, the question we had is where might this animal be found? But I think you might be able to answer that. So where, where do you think you could find this animal? Where on this planet? Um, warmer environments. This one? That one would be cold. No, cold. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Opposite okay. way. Sorry. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, a cold environment, right? And we can also see the, uh, the fur as well, it has a little bit more fur, right? Because the fur can help to keep the, the heat. Okay, very good. So what are we looking at here? Um, well, there's the other question here. What are these characteristics an example of? Um, I guess that's kind of a, a little bit, uh, Diffuse question, not that, not totally obvious the answer here, but we're looking about uh, we're looking for a team that that we're covering in uh, in this course. So, well, you they're, could think, yeah, go ahead. They're adaptations of like similar things. <laughs> exactly, they are adaptations. They're evolutionary adaptations, right? So over time, the populations will change depending on the environment in which they are. Okay, very good evolution. Fantastic. 
So that's the first theme we're covering. Okay, if we look at another example here about adaptations, so maybe everyone takes one or two minutes to think about this. Uh, well, the question is there, it says pick a pollinator. Uh, what adaptations would the plant species have to evolve to increase its reproductive success? Okay, because the, the plant species will benefit if it can take most advantage of the seed distributor. Okay, so I don't know if, did anyone pick one and, and think what the plant would look like or the flower, what the flower would look like if its, if its seeds are distributed by the different um, uh, elements or, or, or um, distributors? I'll just give you one minute to think about it. So someone chose this one, thinking about how the flowers would look like for this one. Well, I oh, I have a picture here. So you see, what what do we see on that image? The flowers kind of forcing the bee to collect the pollen. Yes, exactly. With surface area to sort of give the pollen all over the bee. Yeah, exactly. Fantastic. And it's almost getting caught into the flower, right? So, so that species of plant has evolved the adaptation based on uh, the pollinator. For the next one, what do we see here? Um, the plant is designed specifically for the hummingbird uh -huh. to uh, enter. Yeah. Yeah, you see the flower is elongated and it allows the hummingbird to go and pick the, the nectar. Yeah, um, only its beak can get in. Yeah, now, uh, so that's also the process, an evolutionary process that occurred over time. And the last one, well, it's not interacting with another living organism, but still you can think here that that could be a way for flowers to, uh, to take advantage of the wind, right? So all of these are examples of adaptations, evolutionary adaptations that uh, took place over time, right? And just before we go on break, here's another example of a flower. It's quite interesting. This flower is not producing nectar, but if we read the text here, it says that it, it uses scents, or we were talking about molecules, uses molecules to attract pollinators, okay? So, Pollinators will smell the, the flower and, and go and try to try to get some nectar, but there's no nectar. So is that beneficial for the flower? Yes. Yeah. What about for the pollinator? Maybe it's not getting too much from that thing if it doesn't have nectar. So anyways, there's always some co-evolution, right? Between the pollinator and the flower. So that's one major theme in our course, evolutionary adaptation. So always when we're looking at different structures or different functions, think of the evolutionary process that may have resulted in that. So for this species, how does it spread its, um, without pollen? Uh, sorry, there's no, uh, what does it says here? Oh, oh, because I forgot to add this here. It doesn't produce nectar. So the nectar is some oh, sugar, nectar. okay? Yeah, did I say pollen? Sorry, I, I misspoke. Uh, it doesn't produce the sugar. That's the treat, the, the reward for the insect or, or the bird. So there's no reward, but the pollen will still be distributed. The insect or the, or the bird is fooled by the flower and still goes there to try to, to pick something. Uh, and in that it will, it will uh, touch the pollen and it will uh, spread it, yeah. Okay, so I think we need a break. It's already almost an hour, so that's very long. Um, so let's take a 10 minute break and come back at uh, 5.05. .05. Please uh, try to stand up, walk a little bit, stretch a bit. That's going to be great for, uh, for your mental and physical health again, and, and for uh, your brain as well. Okay, so let's take a 10 minute break. 
for a few minutes, I'll be here. So if there, anyone has specific questions, I'm here also. And after that, I'll, I'll go walk a bit as well. If anyone has any question, you let me know. <laughs> 